Empress Dowager Cixi was a figure of female authority and power in China, against some patriarchal Chinese traditions. She put down rebellion and ushered in reform. Considering the Qing dynasty collapsed four years after her death, maybe she was the one whom held it together. Born in 1835 as Yehonora to one of the most influential Manchu families, the future Empress Dowager Cixi was said to be an intelligent and perceptive child, in spite of her lack of formal education. At the age of 16, the doors of the Forbidden City were officially opened to her as she was chosen to be a concubine for Emperor Xianfeng. Despite starting as a low-ranking concubine, she rose to prominence after giving birth to his eldest son, Zaichuan. With the birth of a promising heir, the entire court basked in a festive mood with lavish parties and celebrations. Meanwhile, outside the palace, the mighty empire was overwhelmed by the ongoing Taiping Rebellion and the Second Opium War. With China's defeat in the latter, the government was forced to sign peace treaties that resulted to a loss of territories and crippling indemnity. Fearing for his safety, Emperor Xianfeng fled to Qingde, the imperial summer resort with his family and left state affairs to his half-brother, Prince Gong. Distraught by the series of humiliating events, the emperor soon died a depressed man in 1861, passing on the throne to his five-year-old son, Zaichuan, who was crowned as the Tongji Emperor. As the mother of the reigning emperor, Cixi was given the courtesy title Dowager Empress. Along with Qian, the Xianfeng Emperor's widow. Both dowagers were left in charge of the young king's welfare and development. Matters of government were left to a regency council of eight ministers, who were tasked with governing until the Tongji Emperor had reached adulthood. However, Empress Cixi made it very obvious right from the beginning that she was the power behind the throne. When the co-regents resisted the Empress Dowager's influence on Emperor Tongji, Cixi and Qian allied with Prince Gong because he did not like the co-regents, on the basis that they were in conflict with his new style of foreign policy. Together, they launched a coup that would change China. In a coup d'etat, they abolished the co-regents, imprisoning five of them, executing one, and ordering two to commit suicide. The government now consisted of Prince Gong, who held the title of Prince Counselor, and the Empress Dowagers. Over the next five decades, China's fate was determined by Cixi. She managed to impose her authority despite the inferior position the strict court protocol gave to women. The widowed empress presided over meetings from behind the screen, as the ministers were not supposed to see her. She never entered the foremost section of the Forbidden City, which was reserved for the emperor. Instead, she relied on loyal men to carry out her decisions, such as Prince Gong, who headed the Great Imperial Council. Since she governed behind the scenes, her achievements were attributed to others, while her opponents cast her as a crafty, bloodthirsty conspirator. Despite the overwhelmingly negative views of Empress Dowager Cixi, her joint efforts with Prince Gong to modernize the nation in the mid-19th century should not go unnoticed. Under this triumviral rule, the government entered a temporary period of revitalization. The Great Taiping Rebellion, which had devastated South China, was quelled, as was the Nian Rebellion in the northern provinces. Schools were created that were geared towards science rather than the usual classics, a modern customs service was instituted, Western-style arsenals were constructed, and the first Chinese Foreign Service office was installed. Internally, an effort was made to end governmental corruption and to recruit men of talent. Regardless of their achievements, the Regency was forced to return power to the 16-year-old Emperor Tongji, in 1873. However, the young emperor's bad experience with state management would prove to be a stepping stone for Cixi to resume regency. His premature death in 1875 soon left the throne in peril with no heirs, a situation unprecedented in Chinese history. An opportune moment for Cixi to intervene to steer the empire in her desired direction, she pushed for her nephew, Zaitian to take over the throne by proclaiming him as her adoptive son. Although this action broke the sacred dynastic law of succession, opposition to the move was squelched, 
and on February 25, 1875, the young prince ascended the throne, taking the reign name of Guangxu. Consequently reinstating the co-regency, with Cixi wielding full influence behind the curtain. Cixi's masterful manipulation allowed the second phase of the self-strengthening movement to continue smoothly. During this period, China boosted its sectors of commerce, agriculture, and industry, under the leadership of Cixi's trusted aide, Li Hongzhong, a skilled general and diplomat. Li was instrumental in strengthening China's military and modernizing the navy to counter the rapidly expanding Japanese empire. While China appeared to be well on track towards modernization in the self-strengthening movement, Empress Dowager Cixi grew increasingly suspicious of the accelerated westernization. Her co-regent Qian's unexpected death in 1881 pushed Cixi to tighten her grip, as she set out to undermine the pro-West reformists in the court. One of them was her arch-nemesis, Prince Gong. In 1884, Cixi accused Prince Gong of being incompetent after he had failed to stop French incursions in Vietnam, a region under China's suzerainty. She then took the chance to remove him from power in the Grand Council, installing subjects loyal to her in his place. In 1889, Cixi ended her second regency and handed over power to Emperor Guangxu who had come of age. Though retired, she remained a key figure in the imperial court as officials often sought her advice on state affairs, sometimes even bypassing the emperor. After China's crushing defeat in the First Sino-Japanese War, its technological and military backwardness was further exposed. Western imperial powers also jumped at the chance to demand concessions from the Qing government. Emperor Guangxu, realizing the need for change, kick-started the Hundred Days Reform in 1898 with the support of reformists. In the name of reform, Emperor Guangxu hatched a plan to oust the politically conservative Cixi. Infuriated, Cixi reacted harshly with a coup d'etat and imprisoned the emperor in his palace. A good number of historians believed that by reversing the planned reforms, Cixi's conservatism had effectively eliminated China's last chance to effect peaceful change, hastening the dynasty's downfall. Amid power struggles in the imperial court, the Chinese society grew increasingly divided. Frustrated by the political instability and widespread socio-economic unrest, many peasants blamed the onslaught of Western incursions for China's decline. In 1899, rebels called Boxers by the West led uprisings against foreigners in northern China, destroying property and attacking Western missionaries and Chinese Christians. By June 1900, as the violence had spread to Beijing where foreign legations were destroyed, the Qing court could no longer turn a blind eye. Issuing a decree ordering all armies to attack the foreigners, Empress Dowager Cixi's support for the boxers would unleash the full wrath of the foreign powers far beyond her imagination. As the death toll and attacks on foreigners, Christian missionaries, and converts in China mounted, a Western coalition force which included Japanese forces, marched on Beijing, where the boxers had imposed a siege on many foreign diplomatic areas. Eventually, the Chinese imperial forces were defeated and the siege ended in August 1900, and Empress Dowager Cixi and the Emperor disguised themselves as peasants and snuck out of the city on August 15, 1900. Cixi and her imperial officers took refuge in Xi'an. The decisive Allied victory led to the signing of the controversial Boxer Protocol in September 1901, where harsh punitive terms further crippled China. The Boxer Rebellion was widely regarded as the point of no return where the Qing Empire stood powerless against foreign incursions, an explosive public discontent. After openly blaming herself for causing the empire to face insufferable consequences, Empress Dowager Cixi embarked on a decade-long campaign to rebuild China's reputation and regain foreign favor. From the early 1900s, she began developing the new policies reforms to improve education, public administration, the military, and constitutional government. Cixi sought to learn from the empire's painful military defeats, setting reform directions and paving the way towards a constitutional monarchy. The ancient imperial examination system was abolished in favor of Western-style education, 
and military academies sprouted across the nation. Socially, Cixi also fought for many reforms unprecedented in Chinese history, like permitting Han Manchu marriages and abolishing foot binding. Despite the good intentions, Cixi's reforms were not significant enough to reverse the empire's decline and instead sparked more public discontent. About six years into Cixi's reforms, the Guangxu Emperor died from poison. In 2008, it was established that Emperor Guangxu died from consuming large amounts of arsenic. Although the report didn't say who the poisoner was, the suspicion has largely been pointed toward Empress Dowager Cixi. This may be because she was worried the Emperor Guangxu would continue his reforms that she disapproved of after her death. On November 14, 1908, Cixi pushed for installation of a two-year-old Puai, the deceased emperor's nephew, as the new Xientong Emperor. Just a day after Puai was installed, the long-serving dragon lady died at the age of 72. Three years after her death, China's last imperial dynasty ended. The Qing dynasty, which had ruled China since the 17th century, was overthrown in the Chinese Revolution in 1912. Ironically, as a famous and powerful female politician, Empress Dowager Cixi's last will was never to let women or eunuchs be involved in politics. Empress Dowager Cixi definitely deserved her reputation as one of the most controversial rulers in history. She was ruthless and so concerned about state matters that she resorted to murdering her own nephew. However, she was important in contributing to make China a modern state. Most of her accomplishments weren't recognized until many decades after her death. Empress Dowager Cixi ruled for nearly five decades. Historians have been very biased with her image. Hopefully, in the future, there will be a more balanced image of this infamous figure.